Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly Sunday School show, uh, Kingdom Lives Matter. Uh, if you're watching us on WGR TV, I say thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, if you would, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to ask you several questions. If you find something that you would like to answer, please go ahead and type it in the comments section. And then if you really enjoy this lesson, I ask that you would share it on your social media pages. Uh, today is a very special day for me. I'm here with a good friend of mine, uh, Bishop Thomas Oputi. I got that right? Yes, okay. that's right. Okay, P-O-T-I. It's going to be right, right there. Uh, we're also going to make uh, Bishop Thomas' address available as well, so you can email him and contact him. Uh, but Bishop, can you give us a little background about who you are and what you've been doing? Well, I'm Bishop um, Thomas Opoti from Ghana, West Africa, um, the General Secretary of the Holy Apostolic Reformed Church, um, a church with over 60 satellite branches in Ghana. Wow. And I'm here visiting, uh, you know, um, the U.S. I'm here, you know, with uh, my very good friend here, David. And uh, I, I, I know it's going to be a wonderful program today. Now, wait a minute. Did you say 67 churches that you I said reside over? I, I said over 60 branches. 60 branches that yes, you reside sir. over? Yes, sir. Wow. Oh, uh, my goodness. That must keep you quite busy. Yes, I, it keeps me quite busy. Uh, how long have you been preaching? As at last year, I've preached for the past 26 years. 26 years. Yes. Wow, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You must start preaching when you're like 12 years old. Was you a boy preacher or something? No, well, no, very young, <laughs> but very young, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, I know you told me that your dad really uh, was bishop of the church. Yes. And then he taught you and brought you up, and, and you became the bishop. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, one thing that I can attest to, brothers and sisters, this is a, uh, a humbling uh, experience for me. Uh, I'm very privileged to be sitting next to a man of Bishop Thomas' stature. Uh, he holds a doctorate degree. Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, Doctor of Divinity. Um, Doctor of Ministry. Doctor of Ministry. Uh, of course, Master's and Bachelor's of Science. So, um, Bishop is very, very, very well educated and uh, versed into this word here. Uh, today's lesson is a very exciting lesson. Uh, we're going to be looking at two different publications, uh, the Pathways publication, and then also we're taking a look at uh, the lesson from uh, the Townsend Press. The Townsend Press. Uh, today's lesson um, that most people will be titled is piety that honors God. Piety that honors God. Uh, and the, in the Pathways lesson, they have a different title called The Pitfall, the Pitfalls of Showing Off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody got a show off in their family? <laughs> you say, that dude is just a big show off. <laughs> uh, now this text, this text is an expert from the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, beginning over in chapter 5, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is teaching about the difference of a genuine heart of a kingdom citizen versus the heart of an individual who is a show-off, <laughs> a show-off for public accolades. Now, one thing, brothers and sisters, I'm convinced that God, our Father, He wants His servants to share and pray. Now, in this lesson, His Son our Savior, Jesus, he's setting a standard toward how to do both, share and pray. Now, the main thing that Jesus talks about is the heart and the motivation of the heart, the motivation of the individual. The Beatitudes that are here listed in 5 and 6 demonstrate how to be real. That's right. God doesn't want any hypocrites. No, not at all. God doesn't want any fake people. He wants us to be real. Yes. Now, this lesson details what Jesus taught over in chapter 5, verse 20. 
And he says, For I say unto you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Now, there's a few key words here in this lesson. Yes, right. Uh, we talked about hypocrite. We know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's actually based out of the Greek theater. That's right. Uh, the word hypocrite comes out of the Greek theater, and it's meaning an actor, right? Mm -hmm. You're being a pretender. Mm -hmm. It's like a person who wears a mask, right? Mm -hmm. uh, pagans, we're talking about foreigners, non-Jews, non-kingdom citizens. Uh, another key word in the lesson is reward. We know what that is. Mm -hmm. God's going to give us a reward. That could be in a physical or a spiritual sense. Secret, secret, something hidden. We understand that. Righteousness, what is righteousness? That's going to be in the lesson. And then piety. I said, I said, when I first looked at this title, Pastor, uh -huh. I said, piety that honors God. That's right. And I said, what is piety? Yeah. What is piety? Piety is a special quality or characteristic of being reverent. You know, um, I, I want to just uh, cut in a little, yes, you sir. know, yes, sir. Uh, by looking at it, you know, when God says we should not show off in his presence, mm -hmm. you know, why, you know, why would Jesus teach this way? Mm -hmm. Why was Jesus bringing us a message, you know, you know, that, that focuses, that centers on um, showing off in God's presence? Yeah. And what comes to mind is the passage in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, the, you know, the commissioning of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah described, you know, King Uzziah, how he died, you know, and how his calling came. But he said, I saw the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was seated on the throne, high and lifted, and the train of his robe has filled the temple. Mm -hmm. That's what Isaiah said. And I want us to look at it from this, you know, uh, uh, angle. He said the train of the tr his train has filled, filled the, temple. the temple. It's it has filled everywhere. Mm -hmm. There is no place for anybody to take glory. Mm. That that's what to me it mm. means. You know, it it is his train has filled the whole place. Amen. You know, so mm. there is no place for me to stand, you to stand before God, mm. so you show off. Hallelujah. And John the Baptist, you know, later said, He must increase. Yeah. For me to decrease. Yeah. You know, bef when God, you know, is in, when his presence is there. There is no place for anybody to show off. Amen. The moment you try to show off, what it means is that you are trying to share his glory with him Ooh. and he shares his glory with no one. Ooh. Wow. You know? So um, every time, you know, we are filled with pride yeah. in our arrogance, and we, you, you, we have this feeling that, no, this is time for people to acknowledge me. You know, mm. this is time for me to be recognized. Mm. This is time for me to be, you know, to be promoted. Mm. In the presence of God, that is what Jesus tries to capture when he says, show off. Yeah. And the last bit I want to add to this, with the Holy Spirit just drop in my spirit. This is fresh. Okay. Pastor Rose will say this is fresh. <laughs> this is you fresh know. from heaven. Yes. You know, it's in Revelation mm -hmm. about the 24 elders. The Bible said, whenever they come before him who sits on the throne, they drop their crowns. Mm. You know, it's a sign of reverence. Mm. You know, they drop their crowns. They, they don't want to share his glory with him. Mm. It, it in a way it means they, they put diplomacy aside. You know, they are saying, yes, we have crowns, but when we have before him who sits on the throne with a greater crown, yeah. we put ours down. down. Mm. You know, and that is what we should have in our churches today. Amen. People are still in the church. I want to be practical here. Yeah. We have people in our churches today. Mm -hmm. And they still want to stand before God with their crowns. Sir. 
you know, I've seen people leave the church because they felt they were not acknowledged in the way they should have, you know. Mm -hmm. I've seen people leave churches because they felt they were not recognized enough. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is teaching us mm -hmm. that when we come before God, we should not show off. Mm. Amen. 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 You know, that reminds me uh, when, the, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness mm -hmm. and God would stop the cloud mm -hmm. and the cloud would lower down That's right. and it would fill that tent. Mm -hmm. No one could go in that tent. Mm -hmm. His presence was there. His presence. It was there. too strong. Mm -hmm. And even when they built the temple, when mm -hmm. Solomon built that temple, and when God's presence came and filled that temple, everyone had to get out of there. That's right. And, and only once a year, right? That's once right. Once a year, one person mm -hmm. out of millions could go in there. Wow. So, man, this is beautiful. So when we, and what I hear you saying is when we try to pump ourselves up. Before it's very precious. You know, because he says, where two or three are guarded. Yeah. You know, so whenever we want to, you know, we walk in yeah. to the place we call church. Yeah. You know, must it increase for us to decrease? Yeah. Or do we want to be seen alongside him? And this is a question for the believer today yeah. to answer. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the reasons I truly, truly believe when someone gives you a compliment or gives you a data boy, mm -hmm. pat you on the back, data boy. That, that's right. You know, they'll say, man, you really preach today. Or, that's right. Man, what a great prayer. Mm -hmm. We have to be so careful because it's so easy to start to feel puffed up mm -hmm. Sunday after Sunday. Oh, David, mm -hmm. you prayed that mm -hmm. prayer, David. Mm -hmm. Woo! Immediately, I'm, immediately, I tell, I tell myself and I tell that person, praise the Lord. Yeah. Pray, because now I'm reminding myself, it's only because of God That's right. that I can pray. And then I'm reminding that person, as God gets the glory. That's right. Not David. <laughs> you know, and you know, the point is, you know, as preachers, as teachers of the gospel, you know, you have... We have people coming in all the time by way of encouragement, you know, just to keep us, you know, going in yeah, what we're yeah, doing. That's good. And that is good. That's okay. But what I normally teach, what I normally tell people is no matter what they say, mm -hmm. no matter how they give you praises and all that, uh -huh. just humble yourself inside. Inside. And he who sees in secret will Amen. reward you. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's keep it moving. Thank you, man. That's beautiful. Uh, I hope you all are really enjoying this. If you are, please uh, like our video, share it online. This is great, man. Amen. I, I could just shut up and just let this go. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I need to do this with you. <laughs> okay. I'm in tall cotton, y'all. I'm in tall cotton. Okay. Let's uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the text. Uh, Matthew chapter six. I'm going to read the NIV version. Is that okay? It's all right. Okay. Any version is okay. okay. And then uh, we'll read verses 1 through 4, uh, and then we'll discuss that. All and right. then we'll read verses 4 through 8. Okay. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites, hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Verse four. So that you are giving so that your giving may be in secret. Let me read that over again. Okay. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then, 
Huh, wow. I love how this writing goes. Then your father who sees what you is what is done in secret will reward you. Good. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Wow, he didn't say if he didn't say he might reward you. <laughs> but you know, it's it's interesting when you look at the the first, you know, um two words of the King James Version. Yeah. And then the first two words. How how it's you know it's all begins. Take heed. Yes, sir. Be careful. Yes, you know, sir. You know, it's like you have a little child who is about to step on something very yeah. dangerous and yeah. you say, Hey, be careful. Yeah. You know, because you have none other to contend with when you begin to show off than God Himself. Mm. Ooh. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful who stores you are about to step on. Yeah, yeah. Because you end up losing everything. Yeah. And, you know, I, I believe in my heart, I believe that Jesus is also implying that it is critical to be careful because danger is imminent. Danger yes. is near. Yes. It's like it's like if you're driving down the street and you see mm. that big yellow sign that mm -hmm. says warning, mm -hmm. caution, That's right. be careful. Yes. Something is yes. close by that could cause you harm. And God is telling you, right, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. Now you're trying to, if you do, you're trying to step on God's toes. Yes. Be careful. Yes. Because you, you know, you're about to contend uh. with the giver himself. He gave it to you. Yes, you know? sir. He said the heaven is mine. Yes, sir. The, the earth and the fullness thereof. Yeah. So everything we have, we are just caretakers. Mm. We are just caretakers. Yeah. So be careful. Be careful. You know, when, you know, you are just the manager you know, trying to show off yeah. with the goods that belongs to somebody right. else. Right. We are just managers. Yeah. Be careful. So be careful. Take heed. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. One of the no one of the things that I was thinking about is that, you know, once once we're careful to abide and to give God the glory, this will definitely assist our heart and staying connected to what is true and honest. Mm -hmm. So what I mean is when the accolades do come, it's like have a shield up. I agree with you. It's good to be encouraged by the yeah. saints. Absolutely. Sometimes you might feel a little down or you yeah. don't know if your message reached the people, you know, and then the people come and say, man, that was right for me. That's just what I needed. You must have been <laughs> you know. reading my book. <laughs> Brother, there is, there is nothing wrong with that. You see, the question we have to ask ourselves mm -hmm. is that why do we praise God when we go to church? Throughout the New Testament, the Gospels, everywhere Jesus was rejected, they, they were about to stone him and all that. What He leaves the place. Yeah. But wherever he is praised... That is where he is. And that's why we praise God when we go to church. Because when we begin to sing praises to him, mm. he comes down. Yeah. You know, so there is nothing wrong, you know, with receiving encouragement. We need that on yeah. this journey. Yeah. You know, people should, you know, give appreciation and praises where it is due. Mm. But every time they begin to open their mouth, and begin to encourage you and give you all the praises, yeah. God watches over to see what is in your heart. Good. You know, whether your heart will be so lifted like Lucifer did and he was thrown down, you, right. you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you begin to think that, you know, you begin to use such express, expressions like, I, myself, I, Myself, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. remember when Lucifer, before he was thrown down, yeah, yeah. he kept using expressions like, mm -hmm. and I will be, you know, mm -hmm. and I, yeah. and I, you know, mm -hmm. God is just watching. He sees in first Samuel chapter 16, he told somewhere, you know, that I, the Lord looks on what is in the man's heart. That's right. So God is watching you. You can receive all the praises. You can receive all the encouragements. Whatever, you know, appreciation the men heart. are giving you, but God is watching the act. And be careful. 
be careful. Amen. Amen. It's like, it's almost like you need a shield. Uh, it's like yeah. you need a breath, a breastplate of yeah. righteousness so that when those accolades come, you can bounce that off of you and so that God gets the glory. Don't let it soak in too much. Be careful because yeah. once it soaks in, that, that flourishes and it, fe it feeds pride. It feeds the pride in you. Everybody has an ego. We mm -hmm. want to keep it minimized. Mm -hmm. Everybody has pride. You want to keep it minimized. But when you start to take those accolades and start to get puffed up, yeah, yeah. I am a great teacher. Yeah, yeah, I am a good, great preacher. Yes. Next thing you know, you're building that pride up inside. And we know what happens when the pride comes. Yes, you can, you can do all your boastings before your children, your friends, family members, by says when you are in my presence. Throw your careful. crown down. Be careful. <laughs> Throw your crown down. Be careful down. because you don't know the next toe you are about to step on. And pride, they say, goes before a fall. Thank you. Thank you. Verse 2, verse 2. One thing, Bishop, that really stuck out to me is uh, these first couple of words. Yes. So when you give, yes. Jesus did say, if you give, yeah. maybe you could think about giving. Yeah. He said, when you give, this is a mandate. It's a mandate, brothers and sisters, to give. Now, obviously, we know it's good to give to our local churches, but I want to encourage you to sow into other ministries and people. See, what I'm thinking about, Bishop, even when, when the church first came on the scene in Acts, right? Mm -hmm. The people, the Pharisees, the scribes, the yes. Sadducees, they were already giving yes, before the were. church was there. They were. When Jesus was on the scene, Acts hadn't happened yet. Yeah. That's right, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. church wasn't officially there yet. Yeah. It wasn't organized yet. Yeah. But Jesus still told them to give. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a church there. He yeah. said, give. Yes. So what I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, yes, give your money to the local church. Absolutely. But also, also, there's ministries out here. There's people that need help. Yes. And give freely. What I would like you to do is look at your, you taught me this earlier today. It might have been, no, it was yesterday. You taught me this. What you want to do, brothers and sisters, Bishop taught me this yesterday, is that you want to find ministries that fit your vision. Like, let's say, let's say you have a, a passion. You have a passion for people that are, uh, have special needs, okay? You have a passion for people that have special needs. Well, find a ministry that are investing and building up that particular sect of people. Let's say you have a passion for our missions work, okay? Well, and maybe your church doesn't do a lot with overseas missions work. Well, find a ministry. Yeah. Find a person like my brother here. My ministry is there. Yeah. Find a ministry. Ministry. Um, and then find, I'm gonna put the website here so they could find your website and your email address. But I'm gonna tell you, I I really believe that God is calling us to give and to give freely. Yeah. Praise God, brother. And I, I'm still taking you back to your text. You mm -hmm. know, I love that text. He said, the, the word is, who do you give to? And he says, the needy. The needy. Now, who is a needy person? You, you understand? Who, who is a needy person? How do we define needy? Needy. Mm. And I love it when Jesus said on that day, you know, the king of glory will sit down and, you know, he will divide us, mm -hmm. the goat to his, his left and then the sheep to his right in, in that parable. And he will say to those to his left, you saw me. You, you saw me in prison and you never visited. Yeah. You saw me naked, you never clothed me. You saw me angry, you never fed me. And then they will say, when? Mm. You understand, you know, Jesus in that particular parable 
try to describe the kind of needy people, mm. you know, that we have to give to. You know, later on he said to them, whatever you did to any of these ones, you did it for me. That's right. You know, so it's up to us to really look, you know, you know, your definition of who a needy person, you know, may be, I think, maybe different from what another person's definition will be. Yeah. You know, Good. but no but. matter, you know, the words we use in describing or what our description is, yeah. there are needy people around us. Amen. You know, not just in Africa. Amen. Even over here in the U.S., Amen. we still have needy people brother, around us. Brother, I, where I live, I live in the inner city, right? You've been to my house. I live yes. right in the ghetto, right in the hood. I mean, yeah. in, in the middle. If somebody in my city said, what's the center of the hood? Yeah. They're going to tell you the cross streets that's about a couple blocks from my house. Ooh. And I love it. And I'm going to tell you, oftentimes I'll walk over to the store. I'll get myself a little treat or something or a little soda. My wife loves getting me like to have a soda or something, or I'll get something sweet or some chips. And coming and going, there's brothers and sisters coming and going that need help, yeah. the needy. Yeah. Now, some of them are probably high. Some of them are probably drunk. Some of them just need some help. And they know there's traffic coming, so there's an opportunity <laughs> for them to mm. get their needs met mm. or their desires met. Mm. Now, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? Well, I'm going to tell you about David, and I'm going to suggest this to you. I made up my mind that I'm going to give. If I go to the store with a $5 bill in my hand, and I'm going to buy a $2 chip and a dollar pop, and I come out of there with $2 left over out of my five, somebody says, brother, do you have a dollar? I'm going to bless them with two. Yes, somebody right. says, brother, I need some change. Do you have a quarter? I'm going to give them a dollar. That dollar, that two dollars is not going to hurt me. It's mm -hmm. not going to set me back. But then I have an opportunity. They say, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord, brother. Shake their hand. Give them a hug. Thank Jesus. I have an opportunity to begin to plant a seed. And as I come and go, all the time, these brothers and sisters begin to recognize me, and I begin to get favor within them. I begin to get, uh, my name begins to grow in that audience. And then as I begin, continue to witness to them and tell them about Jesus, now I have their ear because I've been meeting their needs, just in small ways. Yeah. Nothing major, but in small little ways. And I mean, and this can go, some of you have the ability to write $1,000 checks, $10,000 checks, okay? I was thinking about this earlier today. We were in Bible study. And I was thinking, why are we storing up all this money? Well, I mean, there's people that have $100,000, $200,000 in various accounts, $500,000 in various accounts, and, and won't give. Okay, what are we going to do with this money? We're going to give it to our children? Well, shucks. If they haven't earned it, you know how that goes. Yeah. Something you haven't earned, you're certainly not going to appreciate as if you earned it. I'm going to suggest, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is calling us to give as an investment into our heavenly portfolio. Praise God. God says, it's a mystery, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. It's truly a mystery. Mm -hmm. What it is, is the whole thing is, the mis one of the mysteries of the kingdom, God is calling us to give in secret. And it doesn't always have to be in secret, but our heart has to be cheerful, has to be honest, has to be true, and it has to be pure. And then here's the mystery. You don't know when God's going to bless you back. That's right. but, but his word says that he is going to bless you. Yes. We there just read reward. that. Said he, said there is a, he said there will be a reward for you. That's right. Hello. Praise God. Praise God, brother. No, you, you said it all. And, you know, still in the verse 2. Yeah. You know, it says when you, please read the verse 2 again. So when you give to the needy, mm -hmm. do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, 
to be honored by others. That, that's it. You know, Jesus is saying everybody can give. Yeah. Everybody can give. Yeah. But he is talking about Christian giving here. Yeah. You know, he says, you the believer. Yeah. When you set out to give, mm -hmm. not if, like you mentioned, but when you, when you get ready to give, remember there are others who are also giving. Yeah. But don't let your giving be like them. Amen. You know, it, it, Jesus, I believe, he didn't want to say the Pharisees, the scribes. He, he yeah. did not want to mention their names. He's one of the greatest teachers who ever lived. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he said it in a very nice way. Yeah. But those he was referring <laughs> the to, scribes and the Pharisees. they knew themselves. They knew. You know, he said, there are people who are giving, but right. this is how they give. Right, right, right. You know, they are giving, but this is how they give. Yeah. And when you, you those in Christ, when you set out to give, yeah. don't give like them. No. Because those people out there, yeah. they are giving, but they are not receiving any reward for it. That's it. Praise God. That's it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There's Praise no God. heavenly reward no, when you them. give like them. No. for no, It's done. No. All you get is a... Good job. Good job. Because <laughs> they've received their reward from men. Right, right, right. I don't know what God's rewards are. It's a mystery. But but I can I can use my brain to try to guess. <laughs> you know, I know some. You know some. You know, I on. know some. You know, he rewards us sometimes by keeping us away from some hospitals. Thank you. There away from some surgeries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. he rewards us by giving us peace. Yes. The peace that comes from God, the yeah. joy that comes from the Lord, Hallelujah. is not something you can buy in any shopping mall. That's where we're at. You yes, know, sir. let me tell you, brother, if peace, joy, and those things, you know, can love. be, you know, can, love mm. can be purchased in our malls, some of us will not be able to have them. Mm. Wow. You understand? Yeah. Because I know people who are so rich, yeah. they will walk into the mall you know, pick a cat and put all of it Joy, in there peace, and, love. Pay <laughs> and take it home. Yeah, I got it. You know, but there are things that money cannot buy. And these are some of the rewards yes, sir. that God brings to us. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen, amen brother. Amen. amen. You know, what if, what if we knew, what if we knew, say, let's say if, God had put in the scriptures, well, if you give $10,000, I'm going to give you 10 more years of life. What if you knew that? See, you would be giving. You'd be yes. giving all that you could give. You wouldn't think about storing up nothing. Yes, but <laughs> you'll be giving with the wrong motivation. In obedience, you don't always have to understand yeah. before you do Good. it. Good. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise That's God. That's great. Praise God. Uh, now, let's go ahead and look at uh, verses. Uh, anything else you want to highlight in this first four verses? Um, I like I like this verse three. Let's touch on this verse three because <laughs> this uh, this is a verse that gets misinterpreted. I, I know you come in there. You know, <laughs> I know I know you come yeah. in there. This because see this this verse three. But when you give to the needy, yes. do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Yes. Now this verse gets interpreted, misinterpreted so often. Yes. I hear people say, "Well, it's okay to get high. It's okay to smoke weed. It's legal now. But don't let the church know you do it. Mm -hmm. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand know." No, that's not what Jesus is saying here. Not at all. But this is what people will use. Well, they made marijuana legal, so it's okay to do it. But don't let your right hand know what your left hand doing. No, no. God is saying, if you're going to reach in your pocket with your right hand, I don't need to let the people on my left hand know about it. That's right. My right hand don't need to tell the goodness that it's doing for the glorification of God's kingdom. The right hand doesn't need to let the left hand know what it's doing. Okay? Just keep on giving, right hand. 
you know, um, do you remember the parable of, um, is it the Pharisee and the tax collector? Yeah. Oh, yeah. These two people went to church. Yeah. And one of them prayed in a way, you know, that got the other person discouraged. Mm. You know, and that's what, you know, the meaning of the left hand and the right hand. Yeah. You know, there are times when we say things mm. and do things purposely to get other people discouraged. Yeah. You know, there is nothing wrong with me telling you about an investment or something I'm doing somewhere to get you encouraged mm -hmm. so that you also be involved. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with that. No. You know, but when I tell it in a way to hurt, you know, I tell it in a way to get you down. Mm. I tell it in a way, you know how the you know how the, up. the task collector felt? Mm -hmm. The Bible mm. said he beat his hand on his chest mm. and he said, Lord, have mercy on me. And Jesus said he went home, you know, hurt by God. You know, that's what G the text is talking about. Yeah. Letting the right hand. There is nothing wrong, you know, in even coming to church and even church leaders telling the congregation that we were able to get this amount of funds and this is what we have used it for. There is nothing wrong with that. No, sir. No, sir. You know, if the motivation, if the spirit behind it, the motive behind it, is to get somebody encouraged, is yeah. to get somebody lifted go. up. That's good. You know, but when it is going left way, right. you know what it means to go left way? The wrong way from God. <laughs> 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 I know that much. God gone left. That's the wrong way. <laughs> That's what it left me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, many of us, you know, we've been doing a lot of good things, yeah, you know, yeah. but, you know, we've been going left ways, yeah. left ways with whatever we've been doing. And so many people look at us and they don't even feel mm. like coming to church. Mm. They don't even feel like going before God. That's how the, 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 the task collector felt. You know, it was difficult for him to even open his mouth. Yeah. You know, because of what he heard the other person saying. Yeah. You know, so um, we have to take it. Yeah, and we you have know, to be careful. One of the things I thought about Bishop earlier is that when you have it goes right along with you saying when your motives are incorrect, yeah. then it stops your rewards. It stops it right. It away. stops your rewards, and and then. And then it invalidates. It invalidates the gift. That's right. Incorrect motives invalidates the gift. That's right. So now, so now, as you were saying, let's say I give to somebody, but I do it with haughty attitude. That's right. And I'm making that person feel bad because I'm yeah. giving to them. Oh, yeah, those are just some old shoes. Mm. I don't wear those shoes no more, mm. but I see you got holes yeah. in your shoes, so yeah. I said I'll get you some shoes. Yeah. I don't even wear them things no, no. more. I wear Gucci now. No. You yeah. know, okay, so now you didn't you didn't cheapen the gift. Yeah. You didn't invalidate the gift. And then and then so now the giver, you, what you're doing has stopped. Your reward has stopped right there. Yeah. There's no re more reward coming. Yeah. And then now the receiver's feeling bad. And then now the gift has been cheapened. Yeah. It's all bad. Yeah. It's all bad. And that's what I want to call the left way. You've gone out of the way. You've, <laughs> you've gone out of the way. Yes. The right way is the righteous way. Yes, amen. The left way, you know, you've gone off. You've gone off. May the Lord help us, brother. Yeah. Don't, don't go off. Don't go off. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. We, you know, we're praying for everyone listening to us right now. Yes. That the Lord keeps you encouraged. You know, no matter what the past has been, you know, you, you still have the chance to get it right with God. Amen. Yes. And that's what I believe, you know, Pastor David here is giving you, you know, be motivated. Yeah. Don't get down. Just lift yourself up one more time. 
Amen. You know, and begin to do the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor, Pastor Bishop, I wanted to, I found something here in the pathway that mm -hmm. I wanted to highlight, wanted to read. Uh, it's a couple lines. If you got this book, it's on page 66. It says, the hypocrites did their giving as a duty, not from the principle of obedience to God. We just talked about that. That's right. Nor love or compassion for others, but out of pride. Jesus additionally warned that those who choose this method will have the reward. The implication here is that the reward is far from what they are expecting, especially since Jesus contrasts verse 2 with verse 3. He said, rather than do as the hypocrites do, hypocrites do, we must not let our left hand know what our right hand is doing. This analogy is more than hiding from yourself or family, but speaks to the humility and privacy in giving, as it is a personal gift from you to the work of the Lord through people for people. Now, as you said, there's nothing wrong with sharing the blessing. It's, up to, it's based on your heart. And I'm thinking about the brother, uh, I can't think of his name right now, but it's a black brother that gave all the graduates from Morehouse last year. Mm. He, he paid all their loans. Oh, praise God. All the graduates from Morehouse College in Atlanta. Every hundreds of them, hundreds the Lord, and hundreds and hundreds. May the Lord bless that brother. And that made international news. Now, I can't tell you what his heart was, but I believe his heart was in the right place to do mm -hmm. something like that. I want to believe that. But also, it probably encouraged other people to give. That's right. He was an encourager. Yeah. It wasn't in secret because the whole world heard about it. Yeah. But, but it encouraged others to give. Yeah. And can you imagine with the right heart, how God would have blessed him in his life and his legacy. That's right. Brother. Woo! Yeah. Mega reward mm -hmm. from heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I got a couple questions for you. Uh, uh, question. What are your thoughts on marching around the church to give for an offering? I would like the audience, I would like to hear your comments. You know, like when they have everybody stand up yes. and the tray is up front. What are your thoughts? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, here's another question for you. What do you think about church service that uh, when the pastor announces who gave and how much they gave? You know, so it might, I've been at di different conferences and they'll say, well, Pastor Jones gave $100. Pastor Thomas gave $500. Pastor David gave $2,000. I want to hear your thoughts on this. If you could comment below, let's start a dialogue. Here's another question. How do we look upon those who do not openly give, uh, give in the church when the tray is passed? So what I'm saying is the tray goes by, yeah. and then this person just lets it slide on by them and don't put nothing in the tray. And you know they got some money because they drove in here in the Cadillac and got alligator <laughs> shoes on. How do we look at that person? <laughs> now, with all the technology, that person could give in secret. Mm -hmm. He could be giving online. Yes. He could be giving through the Giveify app. Mm -hmm. He could be paying. He could be giving. Maybe he gets paid once a month, and yeah. he gives his tie once a month. That's right. But how do we look at that? Do we kind of look at that person sideways? Like no, normally, you know, by the time, you know, I, Jesus was in the temple. And giving was going on. Yeah. And the Bible said he and the disciples sat and they watched as people gave. Yeah. You know, he did not condemn. No. You know, the, that the method of giving because people were coming and dropping it. That's what the Bible said. It means, you know, they were filing around it. Yeah. And then the widow came. You know, and she also dropped, and then you know how it went, you know, this thing about widow's might and all that. You all know. Right. But I, my, my focus has to do more with the method. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not condemn that method of giving. Amen. You know, it was going on, it was in the church, and he did not condemn it. Amen. You know, so I, you know, if Jesus did not, who am I to condemn it, you know? That's right. It, it all depends on how we want to do it, how we choose to do it. It's the spirit behind it. It's the motivation behind it. Good. You know? Good. Yeah. Good. So, so what I hear you saying is there might be a meeting of the pastors, and the pastors say, well, you know, 
I've heard a lot of people in the community say that, you know, we're giving to that man, we're giving to that pastor, we're giving. I think we should let the church know. We should let the community know that we're giving too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should encourage them to give by leading with our gift. That's right. Is their spirit. We're their encouraging. Motivation. We're That's not right. boasting. No. But we want to encourage Courage. the people to give. We want to yeah. let you know that we're giving our That's right. hard earned money also. That's right. That's right. And many times in our churches, sometimes gifts are announced purposely mm. to get others encouraged. To encourage you know? the people. Yes, purposely. Well, so if, if Pastor Thomas is giving, yeah. Then, then, I, then, you know, I should I also should go give, and yeah. give, you Amen. know. It is to encourage people, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, their motivation, you know, you know, can be wrong at times, you know. But Jesus said, take heed. Take heed. Be, be careful. careful. <laughs> you know, so now the lesson here, you know, is for us leaders in the church, yeah. you know, to be careful. So we do it in a way. Yeah. So that it doesn't go left to us. Yeah. You, you understand? Yes. Let's jump on the way to pray. Verses 5 to 8, 5 through 8. And then we're going to jump out of this lesson, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> 5 through 8. And, and, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. I see the same principle. I could take the word give and exchange it for the word pray. You know, I, it, for us to really understand this part of the, you know, it's part, this is part of his sermon on the mount. Yes, sir. You know, so it's, it's a total thing. You know, sometimes you take these uh, uh, passages in pass and it's really difficult to understand them. Yeah. Jesus you know, I see, you know, I see the theology of worship here. Mm. You know, it's yeah. the theology of worship. You know, when we go to church to worship, worship, you know, Christian worship, mm. there is Christian worship and there is, you know, mm. we have other kinds of worships too. You know, but in Christian, Christian worship it's made up of different components. Mm -hmm. Offering or giving is part of our worship. Yes. Praying or praise is part of the worship. Yeah. Singing is part of the worship. Yeah. Preaching is part of the worship. You, you, you understand? Now, now, all these components come together and then we call it Sunday worship. Mm. You know, in some churches, you know, this is what Sunday worship includes. Opening prayer, praises, um, exaltations, offering, giving, you know, all kinds of giving we do, preaching and all that. Yeah. Now, Jesus is saying, when you come before me, when you come before me yeah. in worship, mm -hmm. You know, and that could mean to give, to pray, to preach, and all that. When you come before me to worship, the giver must first be accepted mm. before whatever you want to offer will be accepted. Ooh. In other words, That's when good. the giver is rejected, you are rejected with whatever you are whatever bringing. Whatever you bring. You understand? Wow. That's why later Ooh. on it, it says, it says later on that when you come before the altar and there you realize that you you have something or your brother has something against you, go first, reconcile with it before coming. Because when I reject you, Ooh. I will not accept whatever you are bringing. Whatever you bring in. You know, mm. so you the giver, whether mm. you want to offer prayers, whether you want to offer cash, whether you want to offer love and all that, you must first be accepted. Wow. 
And then whatever you bring is accepted. Mm -hmm. So he says, yeah. when you come to pray, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and where, where is the text again? You know, where you read, you read a bit, you know. Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, stand in the synagogues. I tell you, you have received the reward of full. But when you pray, go in the room, close the door, enter into thy closet, pray, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees you has done a secret it, will it, reward you. Jesus is still talking about offering here. He's talking about, it's the same thing. When it's you look at thing. the first part. It's the same thing. When you give cash, yeah. you know, be careful, you know, how you do it so that, you know, you don't miss the reward. And when you give, you offer prayers to be careful. And in both instances, he says, do not like, you know, the hypocrites. He yeah. was referring to, you know, some form of prayers, some form of giving was going on at the time of Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus is telling the Christian worshiper, the Christian believer, that do it this way. Don't do it like you have known right. others do it, but do it this way. This so way. he is giving them a better example to follow. Mm -hmm. And that is Christian worship. The, the main thing, the main thing, Bishop, is to honor God. Honor God. And avoid offending God. Yes. Because you come in, like you said, if you come in incorrect, you've offended God. You've and, offended him. And you got nothing coming. No matter how huge whatever you are carrying is, once you come in incorrectly, yeah. <laughs> whatever you are holding is incorrect too. Because can, as Job said, can something that is clean produce something unclean? Yes, sir. You know, so when you come in correctly, whatever you give will be correct. Yeah. When you, you approach incorrectly, whatever you are coming along with will I mean, be rejected. Jesus' own brother. He said it best in James 5.16. Mm. Mm. He says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous yes. man. That's coming correct. That's right. right. You, you've come, you've got, you bow down, you've put your crown down, you bow down before God's holy presence, and he said, God, forgive me. God, you're, you're the king of kings. You're the God of God. God, see me as holy. Mm -hmm. Jesus, thank you for your blood. Mm -hmm. I know I've made mistakes, but God, I love you. Will you make me righteous in your sight? Mm -hmm. Now I go with my gifts. Mm -hmm. Now I go in with my prayers. And, and James says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, now, brother, it's not the effectual, fervent prayer of a good man. A righteous man. That's good, brother. That's good. There are so many good people out there yeah. who are not doing right things. Yeah. Amen. You know, and so when you think because you are a good person, yeah, then the approach technically is right. It's, 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 it it's, looks right. The approach is right. You may get it wrong. You still might get it wrong. No matter who you are. Yeah. You have to find the right approach to God. Yeah. So, and that begins. So, here. I hate to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. How, what is the difference then? How do you recognize the difference? Okay. I don't want to be just good, but I want to be righteous. What does that look like in God's eyes? A righteous, a righteous man, a righteous woman. What does that look like? You know, you know our righteousness is in God. Mm. You know, Jesus is our righteousness. Yeah. You understand? Now, goodness has to do with the arts, the, the things we do around. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, you know, we, I, I know people who are not Christians. They are good but, people. But they are good, good people. Good people. Yeah. You know, but many times, you know, they end up, you know, with all their goodness and whatever, mm -hmm. they end up approaching God, the, the, you know, the wrong way. Mm. Because they want, to, mm. they want God to accept them because mm. of the good things the good they are things doing. They do. And that was the prayer of the Pharisee. That was the prayer of the Pharisee. He started saying all the good things he's done. Yeah. 
And yet his approach was wrong. They're on the, they're on the corners. Mm -hmm. They're on the corners with their backs all straightened out mm -hmm. and their shoulders back and their chins up. And they're throwing coins and containers That's that look right. like trumpets That's given right. to the poor. Yeah. Uh, they're praying, oh, yes, bless us, bless us. And they're giving their money out. They're fasting. They're intentionally look, looking like they're fasting. Got their face all dried up in the desert with no moisturizer on their face. Hands all ashy, sunken in jaws, mm -hmm. looking like they're fasting. And Jesus said, uh -uh. this is not the the righteous acts. Ah, no. This is not the way that a righteousness looks. Yeah. This is the way that this looks like you're trying to pump up yourself. Yeah. You're trying to demonstrate how good you are. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And you will miss it. Yeah, but you but you're missing it. Yeah. So Jesus said, don't follow the way of the scribes or the Pharisees. He says, follow me. Yeah. Don't go the way of yeah. the left. Your goodness is not going to make it right. <laughs> Your goodness is not going to make it right. It should come from the heart. Amen. Amen. Now, Pastor, what do you think? I, I'm one. I, I'm one that, like, if I'm asked to, somebody gives me a heads up and they say, David, I'm going to ask you to pray and do the altar prayer. Yeah. I, me, myself. I, I ask, the first thing I do is I ask God, I'm, talking, I'm praying now because I'm nervous. I'm like, oh, Lord, I got to do the altar prayer. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> David, don't get up there and goof it up. You know, I'm praying like, Lord, Lord, would you help me, God? Give me the words to say, God. Let this prayer be your prayer, God. God, let me bring to my, remember, my memory on the people I need to ask you to pray for. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit to give me an outline. In my mind, sometimes I'll even write it down. I'm asking God to give it to me. What are your thoughts on that? There is nothing wrong with that. I, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Asking the Holy Spirit to lead you. You know, you know one time, one time, past Dr. Rhodes, my uncle and your father, yeah. past Rhodes said, he, he, they had called me, uh, some brothers, had, young brothers had joined the church, right? I'm embarrassed to tell this story. They had joined the church. Uh, this was a few years back, not long ago. And, and they came up, I'm on the front row, and they said, uh, Brother Rose, we want you to come pray for the brother. I'm like, okay. okay. I've, been, I've been walking this walk. I've been walking okay. this journey. I can pray. <laughs> I can pray. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Give me the microphone. I got up there. I was, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be real with you. I was all in myself. And it sounded like this babbling that Jesus is talking about. Yeah. I got up there and I was, I was, oh, oh. And I, and I found myself saying the same phrase like four or five times, yeah. the same thing, because nothing was coming to my brain. I was saying the same thing over and over and over. And, and now, I mean, the people, you know, they love me, so they will support me. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, pray, brother, pray. And then when I finished, I went over to my uncle's house. I went over his house, and, um, you know, he at that time, he, his ALS was starting to take a stronger effect. So I went over there, and I was hanging out with him. And that was my particular Sunday to go hang out with him. And uh, other people went out to dinner and whatnot. And, you know, I went and got us some food and fixed his plate, and we at the table. Um, and he could still walk at this time and manage to feed himself. And he said, David, he said, David, next time you pray in public, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to tell you what to say. Because <laughs> you didn't know what to say. <laughs> oh, man, I just shrunk down. But it was funny. We just, he laughed. We laughed together. We just laughed and laughed. But... But brothers and sisters, all seriously, all seriously, all seriously, <laughs> what am you I trying know, to say? Um, you know, there is, you know, when you look at the text, you know, I love going back to scripture here yeah, and there. Yeah, yeah. You know, look at the verse 7. The verse 7 speaks not of repetitions, but vain repetitions. Okay. It, it makes That's that, that you. you know, Thank the adjective you. makes it a, brings a whole lot of 
meaning to it. Yeah. Because when you look at the parable that Jesus gave on prayer, yeah. the widow went to the house of this ungodly, you know, wicked ruler, and she kept knocking. Mm -hmm. Not once. Mm -hmm. Not twice. Mm -hmm. She continued, and Jesus said, because of her persistence, she kept knocking the same door Amen. over and over and over again. Amen. You know, and, you know, that is repetition. Mm -hmm. She kept repeating. Repetition. But mm -hmm. Jesus called it perseverance. Perseverance. You know, but there is something called vain repetition. You know, so that, you know, I want, I want you to know that I can talk to God for about five hours. Yeah. You know, and what am I trying to prove? Mm. I, I, I don't have anything to say just to keep repeating and repeating and repeating. And, and that's what he's talking about. Here. Yeah, good. You know, and it's what the pagans do. Because they wanted people to see them praying. They pray morning, they pray afternoon, they pray, you know. And they have all these times that they go in to pray. And sometimes... They have nothing to pray about. But with this widow, she had something she was looking for, mm -hmm. you know, and she kept knocking, and Jesus called it perseverance. We should persevere in prayer. Yeah. You know, what it means is you don't stop until you see the results. Amen. You know, and Amen. that is not vain repetition. There is a difference between repetitions and vain repetitions. Yeah, good. You know. Good, good, good. Um, uh, let's go ahead and close out on this lesson. A uh, couple things that I wanted to uh, that I wanted to talk to the audience about is, you know, what is prayer? What is the purpose of prayer? What is the purpose of prayer? Because you know, if God not if God knows what we are in need of, yeah. He knows what we need. He knows what we want. He knows what we desire. He even knows what we're going to say before yeah. we say it. Yeah. So then somebody might ask, what is the purpose of prayer? Fellowship. Thank you. Fellowship. You know, there are times, you know, when he wants us to ask him. Because in asking him, we surrender to him. Yeah. You know, we put, we put him in charge. He's in control, you know, and he need, you know, he wants to see that in us. Yes. How much we need him. Be a sheep. That's right. You know, so many times, yes, he knows. But he's, you know, John 16, 24, he said, until now you have not asked anything. Mm. You know, he, he needs us to come to him mm. with that childlike faith. You know, surrendering to him, letting, you know, letting him be in control, letting him have his way with us. Mm -hmm. You know, and prayer is a privilege. It's, it's that bridge, yeah. it's that link, yeah. you know, between us and the creator God. Man, you, brother, I'm going I'm to have to tell these people over at Towns and Press to call you up so you can come and be one of the writers in their next publication. <laughs> because, I mean, you are on it, brother. You are on it. You know, because I write down here in the book, I mean, you, they couldn't have said it better than what you just said. The number one that they say, the primary reason that we should pray is to build our relationship with That's God. That's right. That's right. Is that just what you said? Yes. <laughs> uh, they go on to say to shape and mold our desires and character. That's right. Right? Because our desires should be God's desire. Should be in line. It be in line. Anything you ask the Father, you know. It should be in line. According to His will. That's right. So therefore, it's not... It's not we're praying to try to change the will of God. Yeah. We're praying to line up with God so that our will would change to conform to his will. All the tried there. You know, I spoke earlier about vain repetition. Yes, sir. And that, you know, that area, you know, we, we enter into that territory, that zone, 
every time we want to force the hand of God, mm. is giving an answer. You remember the story of uh, Balak and ba Balaam in the Bible? Yeah, yeah. The prophet went to God and God said, no, don't go. Yeah. He went back again, yeah. again, and then God said, okay, go. Go ahead. On his way, he almost died. If, yeah. he, he, you know, if not for that donkey, donkey that yeah. saved him. Yeah. You know, why, why must you go back when he has already given an answer? Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And then we end up, you know, going hallelujah. back and forth. And back he and said, forth. no. No. You know, I remember the story of one sister who wanted to get involved with, you know, a, a man who was not a Christian, ungodly, and all that. And, mm. and I told her, look, the Bible said, don't be equally yoked with them. And he said, yeah. Bishop, I've prayed. And I said, what did God say? Yes, I've not received an answer yet. I said, the answer is already in the Bible. <laughs> Yes, she continued praying, mm. praying. And one day, I, you know, I saw the both of them together involved. But, you know, the end of it was so bad. Yeah. God gave her an answer, but Don't she was not. Do that. She was not happy with the answer she got from God. Amen. And she kept repeating herself in prayer, trying to force the hand of God. Mm. You know, mm. prayers are answered when it is offered according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, brother. Amen. Amen. I want to, uh, if it's okay, Bishop, I want in this Pathways book, I want to read this prayer here. Okay. Dear Lord, we have done things in the name of religion for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. Search our minds and hearts and remove any self-serving desires that will hinder our giving and our prayer life. We want to remain connected to you, Lord, trusting you in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, this is, concludes our lesson. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. I love you. <laughs> I love man, you, you too. You need to help me. Wow. Amen. Thank you, man. Amen. What, uh, what, what I'm going to ask you to do, please, if you would share this on your social media, uh, comment on the video, like it, subscribe to it. It really helps YouTube's algorithms. The more engagement they see, the further they spread the word. Also, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, uh, New York Fried Chicken. They have sponsored four of our youth uh, for the Urban Youth Tech Lab. Uh, we have four youth that support us. They come work behind the scenes, working the cameras, the lights, the control board and everything. They're not on this lesson today because we're in the middle of the day. Yeah. Uh, but uh, normally 90% of the time they're here helping us out. And then also I'm going to put uh, Bishop Thomas, uh, his information, contact information in the notes here. Uh, please contact him. Uh, he's going to be in the States until the 8th. I would certainly ask you to encourage The you to, 18th. The 18th. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so if you're local, uh, we have an opportunity to meet with them. Um, and if you're not, not local here in Michigan, uh, please connect with them. And I'm going to ask you and encourage you, please support his ministry. You have 60 churches that you preside over. That's right. And and I, we were just in the Bible study with Pastor Gann, a 94-year-old pastor here in town. And, and I'm going to share a quick testimony that uh, uh, Bishop Thomas was stating that uh, on a on a Tuesday, they were going to go plant another church. And all leading up until that day, to uh, Monday, they didn't know how they were going to pay for it. He needed $5,000. And he was going to go do God's work. He had to take his team with him. They had, he had to feed his team, put his feed, team in housing, and everything else that comes along with building up a church. Sound and instruments and publication and advertising, all that that goes along with building a church. And he set the date and everybody was ready. Everybody was preparing. And, he, and the money, the guy that normally supports him financially was gone on vacation or taking a leave of absence. He was out of the picture, unreachable. And he kept praying. He kept praying. What's that word? Not vain, but repetitiously. That's he kept right. praying that repetitious prayer. Lord, persistently. Persistently. <laughs> Lord, help. Lord, help. I know you got this. This is your church. And then on Monday, here comes a knock at the door. And this brother said, 
Now he's been out of work for what? For two, two years. months, two years out of work. His brother was out of work for two years. Gave Pastor an envelope. Pastor was thinking, you know, oh, man, this man ain't worked for two years. What do you got in here? A dollar, two dollars. So I made that part up. So <laughs> so he goes to the bank. He tried to scrape everything together. Finally, he opens up the envelope. The brother had got some type of settlement. He got a, some type of settlement, and and he told Bishop Thomas that. Sunday, the Lord had told me to come and sow a seed. Brothers and sisters, guess how much it was? $5,000. That's right. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Now, I can't imagine what God is going to do for this brother, but I imagine yeah. he's going to do something great. Something great, yes. Hallelujah. All right. Something. Thank you for tuning in. I love you so much. Thank you, Bishop. I love Thank you, too. you so much. And all the viewers there, God bless you so much. Good night.